This is Flash at the Drop in a Coil show with Larry Woods and Rob Works. We're here on a Thursday, the 18th of June, 2020 so far. Check in with Grinner on the uh, real libertymedia.com and see how we're sounding for episode tonight. Anyway, I usually uh, introduce the uh, chatters and the bots and bodies is what I call them. People like to be mentioned on the radio, and I like to mention them. And if you're interested in chatting in the RLM chat, tonight you've got for your typing fun and game. Here's a fizzy, here's silence. Uh, Uh-oh. we got to start over? I don't know. Oh, mm-hmm. you refreshed and now it's there. Oh, okay. we, so we're we live? we're still fine then. Right? I think we're I think we're live. It shows it's live. It's, yeah, it seems to be going. It's not really. Well, uh, Miss is talking about her festival, but yeah. maybe I don't know. Should I just go on or what? Yeah, just keep going. Oh, yeah, yeah we're all hey, good. Hey, Grimner, we're all good. So we got for your chat. We've got Barman and Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Chelstoni, Circle, O, Damn, Meter, Me, Frumpy Work, Graham Z, Java Doctor 2, Prince, Rob Works, Trust, Number 1, Vanna White, W4DKB, Weather Dork, Woodman, Z Chloe Singular. The Phantom CC66 Cyborg Noodle Evan and Siv Gromit Jays Nines Jays L Woods 01 Matt WJ2002 Mr. Snick Ponsa Sock Puppet Solve in there. Hey, out there. Walter. The holiest Roger and Zpix. So if you're chatting at bots and bodies, that's what you got. So we decided to step on to uh, other topics, take a little uh, turn. Right, guys? Yeah. Well, I wanted to throw one out at you live and see what we can do with it. And it's really fucking controversial. So, do you want to be clean and nice, or do you want to be like me? <laughs> well, I don't want to hurt your show. But Hit me with your best shot. Okay. I've tried to explain to people in the Internet realm that I have a solution to your national crises. And they say, well, hey, Flash, what the hell are you talking about? And I tell them, if you want to fix America, you got to get all, all the Senate um, Jews, get them all the fuck out. That's, that starts your healing right there. Once you get Israel out of America, America will stop looking like Palestine. Whoops, did I touch a nerve? I'm all for that. The Zionist Jews are the ones that are fucking up the world. The real Jews are lovely mm. folk. Exactly. See, Larry, that's, that's why I bring up scary stuff, because you, you know. So what do you got to say about that? Well, the Zionist Jews are the Russians. They're they're from that country, uh, Kurdistan, or I forgot the name of it, some country up just next to Russia, and they migrated down and took over. Yeah, I'm going to make everybody mad now. The, the way of the world is the rich folks go in and make really nice neighborhoods. And then they get old and die. And their children sell their houses. And they sell their houses to the less rich, the poorer folks, the minorities, the the people that don't have as much money as their parents did and they use it up tear it up make it really really bad and then the zionist jews come in and buy it up 
and re-rent it. So it, it's it's a cycle, and then pretty soon it all gets torn down, and the rich folks buy it up again and make nice houses, and it'll go through the same cycle over and over and over. Hmm. Well, that's not the popular belief about those particular people who live in the Middle East. There are a lot of folks out there that seem to think that Israel people are the victims when <clears throat> no, they're, they're the aggressors. Yes, just like America. Yeah, and, and any other country like this one's probably had to tie up with the U.S. and shit. I, it, it, I know that as a fact. I shouldn't say probably. But Cuba the Danes have a Navy. Always been aggressive. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but the Danes have a Navy, Rod. Okay. So the, in that international bullshit game these rich people play, they've got to represent Denmark. So they can't be neutral in this crap. they got to be participating in it. Or they get slapped in the face. Hey, what are you at? You're the other side. So they play the game. And I think uh, what Cirque told me was, yeah, they sent a submarine as their, you know, to help in the uh, Iraq situation, which is a little bit in interesting because it's landlocked. So outside of bombing it from the sea, I don't know what the fuck else it could do. It was, it was symbolism. But First still, part of this devastating fucking war machine, these idiots. It was a Seems grand like. virtue signal. Yeah. Virtue oh, There's another new word to learn. Yeah. Help us dominate the world or we will dominate you. Okay, but outside of the American Senate, being half, half of them are holding dual citizenship with Israel, which I don't understand how they pull this shit off. Yeah. You, know, you can't even be a citizen if you want to have dual citizenship. They got, hey, you got to go through this and that and the other. But in America, as long as it's Israel, you just got to be a citizen. Well, they openly <laughs> demand you sign an oil loyalty oath to Israel. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I know that. It, how much more in your face does it need to be? I mean, it's the interpretation. Uh, what do you think, Larry? It's our fault for electing these assholes. <laughs> Talk about. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Just All right, like but... George Carlin, he said, I don't vote, and the reason why is because I don't want to be held accountable for what's going on. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. but, but see, then the people that vote in think that there's a difference in parties and all that bullshit. They don't realize they're being screwed by the same group of people, no matter what color they, they think they're liking. The whip doesn't care. And it shows itself in, you know, right, our present situation in life with the control freaks sticking their hand up your stand, you know, stuff, trying to See, you've got any yellow cake between your butt cheeks there, Mr. Traveler. Yeah. You could be a threat to national security. <laughs> be a good American. Hate everybody equally. That way we keep you divided and not united to come against us. Yeah. Wow. Wow, Larry. You could just... It takes me five minutes to say it. You do it. 20 seconds. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mr. Smart Guy. Thanks for trying to the basic elements. <laughs> well, beside, okay, so beside the U.S. Senate, who the hell in their right mind supports Israel, and why? How could you be blind to the reality of what Israel did? Has done and is doing. Yeah, but it's eh, did, done, that is still there, Ron. Please, Mr. Correct. <laughs> somebody else's country just because we want what they've got. So what was the point of Palestine and all this horse shit over the years? They tell you one story, and then if you dig through all the history and find real things, <laughs> they're always different than what the news and educators told you. 
or maybe the religious. Of course, the religious is the most far-fetched. But their sources are, you know, they're uh, uh, hmm, faith-based. <laughs> no reality at all. They just go, yeah, that's going to be a law. History is written by the winners. When are we going to win? I'm sick of these fucking rules. <laughs> We're I mean, people are convinced, you guys, that anarchists are violent, chaotic, and uh, lazy. Well, not lazy. We are lazy. But uh, worthless, I would say. We're, we're a hindrance on humanity. Useless eaters. Yeah, but the true human that is truly an anarchist just doesn't give a shit about shit. <laughs> it has that's nothing not, to do with not, hurting anybody true. or burning down a building. That would be too much work for me. What about you? People write way too much into the word anarchy. It has a very concise and simple meaning. No, yeah, rulers. I know that. No rulers. Nobody's calling the shots. That doesn't mean you're violent. That doesn't mean you're lazy. That doesn't mean anything, other than nobody's telling you what to fucking do. Well, that's one way to put it. I'm all for it. As long as you don't hurt somebody else or destroy somebody else's property, do whatever the hell you want to do. Well, yeah, but see, they broadened the word victim over the last 40 or so years. So now if somebody calls you a she because you dress like a girl but you're a guy, you can be insulted and sue them. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. That's what they like. That's not the reality. I'm too old to yeah. keep up with all the political correctness and yeah. I call people what I think I see. <laughs> And you're still alive. Go figure. Yeah. They ain't killed me yet, but they've been trying. How long? 72 years. Now I'm nine. And see? And counting. And counting. Ah, stop crying. You little <laughs> I got another 18 uh, 20 in me, too. Probably. We're, we're, on. we're expecting that, man. Because <laughs> we're... I started a movement of my very own. You've been around long enough to finish this coral business anyway. Then you can do what you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After the fact. I've started my own movement. I'm calling it the non-movement movement. And it's really good because you don't have to do shit. <laughs> don't join. Don't participate. It's how you know you're successful because it, you ain't doing it. <laughs> it's like the first step to freedom. And, and here's the thing that cracks me about about all these people that talk about this freedom shit nonsense, right? <laughs> if it's if it's free, why are you paid for it? No, no response. Uh, sorry, I got distracted on the chat. My oh, talking about that. That. he's got something going on about his case. And, um, the judge is having him write a complete history of his case. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. But that, well, that was kind of J pretty good, Mike. J.P. Morgan, if you can't charge for it every month, I don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah, if you can't put a meter on it, I don't want it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, you guys are a lot of fun. Oof. Well, nothing is free. Free energy is not free. You got to pay for the equipment. But once you pay for the equipment, then it's still not free because every four or five or ten years, you've got to replace a circuit board. Well, that's two dollars and fifty cents right now, and if you pay somebody else to put it in, it might be fifty bucks. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't get caught up in that free energy perpetual motion trap. That's yeah, there's no such thing as perpetual motion. Yeah. If it's a magnetic drive motor, that magnet is going to run down in 300 to 400 years, and there's nothing we can do about it but replace it. Damn it. Well, so, I don't want it then. Yeah, me neither. A bunch of crap. Keep your damn dog. 
Wow. Shit that wears out in 300 years. Jeez. Yeah, who needs it? <laughs> just just think of, of the landfills that will be suffering because we don't have all those products to throw away. I know. I know. Wow. See, you, you, you deep think, you think of all the important stuff. We'll have to but, hurry. Hey, but I'm in a hurry. I need, I need it yesterday. And I'm still trying to figure out who in the fucking world today in their right mind that isn't a nut job could support Israel and what they do. Hmm. And it, and because I agree with Larry, it's the Zionists and they're using the name Jew for protection to get away with their evil crap. And because people are all caught up in this religious drama shit, they abide by this insanity to appease a handful of people. I'm a little tired of it. Not, you know what? I'm one of those people. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't want yeah, to take not. advantage of the rest of you guys like that. It just rubs me raw to, nah, I don't want to play that. Yeah. I don't consider you one of those people. You would if I lived in Israel and was like a Jew. Jew. Flash, are you Jewish? Yeah. Maybe you can explain to me exactly what kosher means. Until I use in hands? No, it's just by the, a rabbi. The method of slaughter is part of it. The method that you slaughter by, and then it's got to be blessed by the guy with the gold electrons. That look, he looks kind of like he belongs in an after hours club in Manhattan. So, what, what is the method of slaughter? Uh, that's Jewish shit. I'm not real acquainted with all that. I just know the principle. I don't. I don't participate in the rituals. I don't believe in the thing. I just got born into it. And these people claim me. So, what do you do? Reject people because they're kind. I mean, geez. they don't really know anything more than what they know. Not everybody takes this religious crap to the levels of Holocaust and all that crap. I don't. And there's others that don't. But, mo well, most people, they fucking do. What am I saying? <laughs> I must be losing my mind, Larry. Wow. <laughs> do, you know how many people, do you know how many people you, you'll meet in your life that don't know that it wasn't the Holocaust did or didn't happen? Is that they were calling those slave labor camps something different to distract you from what took place? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I've said many times, that was American money laying the railroad tracks and you know occupied Poland to these labor camps. Mm -hmm. So hmm. propaganda words. But, hey, man, George Bush's daddy, what's his new Prescott? <laughs> he had him a ball bearing manufacturing plant in occupied Poland during World War II. That's right. Mm -hmm. He was a war profiteer. Well, ball no, bearing, no. drop molten metal from a high altitude and let them air cool. Remember you brought that up to me? Yeah. See, I listened to you. And then I follow through and I connect. It has to be in a vacuum, right? Yeah, in a vacuum. Right. Otherwise, you get a teardrop. <laughs> yeah. We've I get one of those anyway. It. We've been playing with the teardrops lately. Uh -huh. Vibrating a single drop of water at different frequencies to see what the patterns come out. Uh -huh. Beautiful stuff. When they're harmonious frequencies, when your equipment is in resonance, the pattern will be beautiful. When it's in dissonance, when it's not in resonance, it'll be just a random shape. Chaos. Chaos, yes. Lovely stuff to play with. Vibrate, so vibrating water drops? Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't know. I guess the wind does that too in a way, doesn't it? Different frequencies, different thought patterns, the frequencies that your mind puts out. Yeah, all that weird shit. Oh. That makes different shaped crystals when you freeze the water. Donna has responded to your question, Flash. Oh, did I ask something? I was 
type in notes. Uh, not flash. There. Um, oh, there about the kosher food. Oh, castrate. Castrate is a whole body of law pertaining to what is kosher foods and the way to prepare them. Oh yeah, there you go. And that varies from community to community depending on your variety of Jew you are. I didn't know there was more than one variety of Jew. Mm -hmm. See, I'm stupid. Just like Christians, there's a... It's all Rob's fault. There's a fire of different kinds of sex. Everybody has their own idea. I like sex. sex. Yeah, well, you know, that's kind of why I see a way to organize religion, Rob, is you know, if you got to join a club and uh, the rituals and no secret words that other people don't know, I don't like shit like that. Secrets is what yeah, causes all, all the same to me. A bunch of religion others. Right, but they get secrets They're within groups. groups. Any group has their own like little theme. That's what makes you a group. And and they usually they're shut off to new people. People come in and they're shut out immediately by the group. You know? Yeah. Out of all the religions, government is the worst. Hmm. Okay. I believe you. <laughs> I'll do what I tell you to do, you're gonna go to hell and burn forever. Yeah. Aren't they loving and kind? Oh, yeah. well, think about the concept of hell. If your mm -hmm. father in heaven loves you more than your father on earth, yeah. your father on earth would never even consider sending you to a place like hell. So no. why would somebody that loves you more consider? Uh, <laughs> a little bit hypocritical, don't you think? <laughs> but it's a good story. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're young enough, I would assume at my age today that if I had been uh, confronted with all that religious stuff and raised with it, I would believe it to this day, too, because it's the first thing I knew. But that's not what they spent their time teaching me, so I didn't learn any of that shit. <laughs> oh, they even have unions, Donna says. There's rabbinical <laughs> unions that oversee things that are kosher and up to standards. Wow. For retail. Damn, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that was... Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. Well, you know the damnest thing about all this Arab Jew shit is? It, if you stand them next to each other in, in the same clothes, you can't tell one from the other. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I've always thought that it would be a good idea to make everybody's army fight naked. That way you couldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> well, now the Jews of the Arab, they'd have they'd have a, a very distinct difference. <laughs> yeah, they're they're big. They'd be going, oh wow, the guy, poor guy. I don't know if I can kill him. <laughs> well, <the> thirties. <laughs> Look what they did. <laughs> but the worst of all this stuff is these people are related. Today, I mean, it's been 70 years. So the people that are alive in it now, <laughs> they've all been fucking each other for 70 years. So <laughs> guess what? We're all fucking Palestinians now, baby. Everybody. Thank you, Pippet. Happy hippie. I know. Hey, I live in a socialist country already. So I'm way the fuck ahead of you. Yep. It, yeah, there you go. Oh, no, they're in every country. And they're in the governance of every country. Well, I, don't ruin my illusion. <laughs> you Captain Buzzkill. But, see, but the difference between me and some other people is I admit it's an illusion. <laughs> but when you got to talk about something, man, this shit is fucking funny. <laughs> They they shut down. <laughs> they shut down the economy overnight. <laughs> because you, you want to know why? Because they can. No, because the real reason for it is there's no money. They can't. Yeah, they can't print any more money without really bizarre explanations. So they made for the collapse. So they made yeah. So they made a COVID and they let people riot. Now they got all these reasons to do the things they're going to do to you. Ooh. 
I don't mean you and Rob in particular, but some of you in America out there in the free world have, you know, you hit a skid mark with your government. Because I don't see, I don't see this as people talk at all. Do you? And it's your, you know, I don't really claim it anymore in any of that, but I'm looking at it and I'm saying, no, the people that are doing all this horrible shit, no, those aren't the regular people. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's, that, it's, that's not the population. That's the government. It's the same oligarchs that are running the rest of the world, the whole country, yeah. the whole world. No, that 13 well, people. Okay, I just didn't want my peers to think that uh, I'm looking at, at my my equals out there in, at home and looking down on them because they're fighting and rioting because they're not. Those aren't the ones doing that. That's promoted, and it was pushed, and the weakest of the weak are the ones doing the dirty shit for the people that got, you know, in you know, big companies to replace it all with. I'm, I'm all for demonstrations. I are think you? that's, yeah, I think demonstrations are a wonderful way to get your point across. However, if you're going to demonstrate, don't be violent. If you're going to be violent, be violent by, against the right people. Be violent against the people that are doing this shit. Not your own race or your own neighborhood. Your neighborhood's not the one that's causing the problem. It's your government. If you're going to be violent, be violent against somebody that makes a difference. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't even go that far. If you're going to do something, spend all that energy and, and, of course, none of these people have resources, so the resources are coming from somewhere. So yep. that's in question. Um, but if you're going to do something, do something that's actually going to really make a difference, like uh, build something that will help you become independent of their energy cartel. Yeah, do something about it. Don't... Don't no. hurt your neighbor but because being you're mad. To quit being assholes has never worked and never will. <laughs> well, right. But can you consider the mental health of a, of a person living in a city doing the mask thing and all that crap, washing your hands and gloves and being a victim of that hoax about the virus, right? Then they spend two months in lockdown going along with all this shit that's really bad for them physically. But they don't know that because they're being lied to about it. But and then they come out of all that, and then there's riots to go play. After you've been deprived for two months, whew, wow. This was this was just a, another stage American well, plan. They just get bigger and bigger every time. It's a distraction to keep us from seeing what's really going on. Hey, the dollar collapsed in um, September of like 2019. Yep. That's what happened. But how do you talk about that and not sound like, oh, well, where are you get your, where's your facts? <laughs> Look around you. <laughs> where's my facts? I live in Denmark where we're not doing that shit. Apparently, Rob and Larry and uh, Grim and Mary and a few, it's a handful of people that are living in relatively peaceful places through all the drama that we're getting on the internet. Oh, yeah, it's, all, it's isolated in the big cities. I mean, and all the uh, basically uh, leftist-run cities, Democrat cities. And I hate to use those terms because I don't, you know me, I, they all suck. <laughs> but you got to have two halves, though, to make a whole. But that's, what, that's it where is. it's happening. Yeah. Places like yeah. Seattle, Portland, New York, L.A., you know. I know. Well, at fact, least I know from the seeing that on the internet. What I don't know is I'm not actually physically capable of looking at it. So uh, it's very frustrating. Now. To just see the stuff on the internet, news crap, and there's very little impartial, uh, uh, non-objective stuff coming through. Anything that's available to me here in Denmark on the internet right now, it's all got a, a side to it. Yeah. Yeah, either there's no neutral way to really present this shit in the first place. 
But they don't even try to. They just blatantly are either for it or they're in it. And they're supposed to be news people telling you about it. Yeah. Not encouraging you to choose which bad. side do I want to be yeah. on. Yeah, that, that, that hasn't happened in 50 years. But. What? Well, it's owned by six or seven people, all the news media. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, right? And, uh, oh, and that's for me, it always time. comes back to the same thing. But all of this shit is is completely fucking irrelevant and should be obsolete. We should be beyond all this shit. Beyond all now. this, yeah. We yeah. should be fucking exploring the stars by now. Yeah, and that's why I now, call this girl in the herd. Filling gas tanks and making these uh, motherfuckers rich. So they can choose and, 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 and choose our future, basically. Using the thousands of, of ways for free energy out there. Yeah, we've got a handful of megalomaniacs running the world and choosing our future, what it's going to be like. And it's very that's, grim. That's what pisses me off. Okay, mine isn't as bad at all. So, see, I get stuck in these arguments with people, and they're living in a different way, different reality than I am. But if you read about it here, they make it uh, on paper and the Internet and shit, they make it sound like it's terrible. So, either I'm full of shit, and I'm not in Denmark, or maybe the people that report information to the public are lying like motherfuckers. Uh, or if not lying... Exaggerating, like they did the corona. Uh, I don't misdirecting. Think, like I don't even think they, they even think that much. I think they're just reading the freaking lines. They're just <laughs> bobbing heads, reading their fucking lines. They, uh, a computer could do it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're well, doing what scripted. we're told. Or I saw scripted. Scripted. You can you've seen the videos of all the bobbing heads saying the same exact thing over and 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 over. You know, that's how we'll believe it. Uh, yeah, it was. It's neuro linguistic programming. They pound it in and pound it in and pound it in and pound it in until it's all you know. That's all well, you get to hear. From this information from school. Okay, today I saw a link of the Portland police or out whatever it was, armed in black suits and you know masks and all that shit. Uh, no, visor things, clear mm -hmm. visors. Right. And they were tearing the wall, uh, concrete cinder block walls, you're pulling them off of Portland, some street in Portland. Pallet. So, my first question, I got two questions, right? Now, the same people that allowed all these horrible fucking events to take place are now slowly turning over the other way, and they're going to use the resources that all this is about, the police, to regain control of the problem. So, what was all this for? Misdirection. From the money thing, you think? That's what I think. It's the only answer I've got. Yeah. Well, well, okay, look at, look at the money thing. The Treasury Department is taking over the Fed. The Fed is buying up all the bonds. What's going to happen? They're going to say, okay, it's time to pay back the money that you borrow or that you bought these bonds. We're ready to call them due. Give us the money. The Fed is going to, is going to uh, go into bankruptcy, and then the Treasury Department will take over, and the new U.S. note, the U.S. Treasury note, will be distributed. We'll go to a resource backed economy. Well, hasn't that been like a an economist dream of some kind for years? Oh yeah, to go to the resource exactly. and get off the yeah, dollar yeah, bill kind of crap. No, but they, they always come up with money. Well, right, but they always could, that's what I mean. They come out with uh, arguing about well, what what would the value of something be if you didn't trade them in U.S. dollars? How well, come U.S. dollars is the only way there is to calculate a value? The richest people in the world, the Arabs, oil land holders that deal in the petrodollar, they won't be able to do that anymore. 
especially when the free energy is released, if they'll ever do that. If, if, yeah, you, well, if you've got an unlimited power source, yeah. you don't need oil anymore. Well, plus they they've had long. that shut. Look what happened to oil. What, three, four months ago, it hit minus 35 a barrel. So how do you well, recover from we that? still paid over a dollar a gallon for it. Yeah. Suckers. Well, my Jewish family thanks you for that. But, uh, I mean, wow. How do you... How can uh, a country, a whole fucking country, 50 states, be this absolutely 50% divided like you are is my question. And I, we don't have a, a, a liberal, crying, girly liberal to uh, explain that side of it, so we'll have to talk for them. <laughs> Never mind. That was, <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah. Well, somebody in the chat just asked if a resource back economy will work when the energy is free. Yes. Because then we can devote our time to science, to technology, to art, to music. To, to loving one another instead of having to go out every day and fight for a penny and then give it away at the end of the month? To a government that doesn't do shit for you except watch your, watch your place burn in a riot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the rest of the time. Uh, people don't I, even, I, people don't even have, can't even fathom the concept of living in abundance. It's it's foreign yeah. to them, and wow. and they're worried about us putting people out of work by having free energy. No, those people will just be have new jobs, more and money, they, and you'd be buying shit. Free yeah. industry, yeah. Crying out loud! See, I, they don't want us free. They they want us to live in the illusion of freedom, and it's been working so well for them for so long. Then there's groups like you guys, you know. Out free range sheep. Yeah, but aren't we all to a level? That's in my lack of participation. Although it is a, an act of rebellion, it doesn't seem to accomplish a whole fucking lot. <laughs> That's because you're the only one doing it. <laughs> when it when it becomes a movement and yeah. millions of people do it, then yeah. it will make a difference. Well, that's what I say, but they don't believe me. They think I'm telling them a story, but. There, that does lead me to, to open this po pocket of worms here, is partnerships are not for everybody. See, like Larry and, and Grim, are, they're lone wolves, that kind of thing. And then there's people like me and Rob, and we, we get into the partnerships thing in life, and it's an advantage over the solo act. You're, you're using two straw men to make one stronger straw man against, you know, the... <laughs> Admiralty Court world. <laughs> yeah. For when you have to go to court and fight. <laughs> Some people don't, you know, don't even want to be a person. They know better. Because there's ways around it. And that's, yeah. a, that's a big thing here in Denmark. I don't have a number. It's what well, number for... Well, oh, I was saying about there's a, being a man, a living man, is not as uh, foreign here to the common man as it is to where I'm from. Oh, yeah? Well, they're telling me, uh, we've had conversations about religion because they claim atheists. And I'm, well, that's interesting, but nope, they're atheists, that's their business. I don't tell them they're not atheists. But whatever belief system that you carry doesn't really make you a... It's got nothing to do with you. you know, that's just uh, like a title or something. It, it's, a, it's impressive to certain kind of people that are tuned into that horseshit. Yeah. Larry knows all about that. Well, yeah, it's, it's like you're not, you're not your profession. Just because you're a mechanic, that, that, that's not who you are. You happen to no. have skills... Yeah, but like Larry was saying, he's got some letters at the end of his uh, title, and that indicates this, that, and the other, but to him it was not that big a deal. It was a bigger deal to other people than him. So, oh, and, absolutely. Well, that's a hard thing to, to learn from somebody else. 
But I understand exactly what you mean from a, a, another angle. But to admit that the system has deceived you and you still survived it, so hmm. oh, yeah. you played in it. You played in it. You, you and Rob both were members of the organized thing at one time. Oh, yeah. Not me. I I I had a, a real job when I was eighteen. <laughs> And that lasted until I was 19, and then it was done. That's it. I wasn't there long enough to file for a freaking uh, tax thing. Yeah. So, but luckily for me, because of it, I never got involved in the IRS crap. And whew, life went a way different way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if it had stayed, like, stayed that way, I would have been working there. And become like my dad, stayed working for the company. Ah. But they did have rules like if you were going to work in uh, the upper echelon of Ford, you had to spend time on the line. Um, yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they expected their upper people to, to know how to fucking put a car together. <laughs> really? that's, that's the way I feel every company should be organized. If you're going to run the company, you've got to know yeah, how to operate each of the complaints. Yeah. Every position yeah. there, you've got to be functional at. It was an impressive system to the uh, building there. It was huge. It was, uh, I don't know, 3,000 guys worked there at the high yeah. time of employment. But, and they had a railroad, cars come inside the, the, uh, into the building. It was just huge. I can't even describe how big it was. I did, but, work, I did work in Bell Helicopter in Dallas. It was like that. There you go. So Yeah, you guys probably know. And there's people that on the radio that probably know ten times more than I do about it. But the experience of working at Ford taught me a lot of, about how to plan stuff. I'll tell you that. Yeah. They knew if you do this, if you do things in sequence and in order and you calculate how much this and how much that, yeah, you come out of it at the end with this really nice thing. But if you saw the car as they made it, <laughs> yeah, it was chaos. Wow, that's an ugly chaos. fucking process. I would go out of my mind if I had to stand in the same spot all day screwing in the same screws. Well, the car moves down the line while you're working on it. So you yeah, it and, and it, you do the same thing to every car over yeah. and over and over. But that's that not learning good. anything. No, yeah. but the money was so good when I was eighteen. I didn't care. It was like <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have an uh, opportunity to, to go to further an education. I had fucked that all up. So my job was going to be, you know, eight bucks an hour and change on the assembly line. And I went, okay, I can live with that. And it was only three days a week, but union contract it gave me benefits beyond. It was ridiculous. I worked. 10 hours on Monday, 10 hours on Friday, and 8 hours on Saturday. But everything over 8 hours on Saturday was time and a half. <laughs> <laughs> 28 hour, a 28 hour work week and a, a cash in the two, a check and clearing 225 in 1978. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and I had a job. <laughs> so, yeah, it was. Well, I was an ambitious teenager, but I grew beyond it quickly. Yeah. I got really lucky. Yeah, I had a greedy bone once, but I never bought anything with nothing. I always used other people to buy shit with. I've always thought if I don't have the money to, to buy it right now, mm -hmm. then I can do without it. Yeah, well, there's some things that require signatures. So. Well, yeah, like buying a house and a car. Yeah, I, yeah, van. But I've even gone beyond that with the cars. I, if I don't have the money for it, I don't buy it. But the good old days, Larry, you know, when we were young, the, the things that we did, that we look at the world today, and you can see these kids that uh, 20, 25 will never get the chance to do the shit we did. And like me and Rob, you, you're a few years older than us, so we'll never get the chance to do shit you did. And the cycle just goes on and on and on. And they call it progress, but you know what I think it is? Regress. 
Yeah, and a really bad idea, because it's going to blow up in the face of the people that think they own us, which they do, and we do dance, and blah, 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 and all that crap. But there's the possibility that in the future, there will be enough people that know the truth, as we do say, and we'll get together and say, hey, no, enough is enough. Let's do something else. And then the anarchy can start, because anarchists do not want any fucking violence. The last thing an anarchist is going to ever participate in is violence. That breaks the code of being an anarchist. Do no harm. How do you not harm somebody if you're pounding on their head with a you know, baseball bat or something? I don't see it. Because they go, well, you don't have a gun. Oh, aren't you afraid you could get your somebody to break in your house? <laughs> nah, I got a dog and a baseball bat. I hear yeah. you coming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, you know, so, that's all yeah. a matter of like situation. Yeah, I don't live in that fear, do you? No. Never have. Do you lock your doors? I do lock my doors. That's just oh, because yeah. I want to. That's just because I want to know who I'm letting in. <laughs> well, we had a killing over here in Denmark a while back because a drunk guy accidentally walked into a guy's house that had been afraid, whatever, and he shot him. Oops. So, uh, there you go. This is a while back, and it's big. It's a big thing here. It's so rare, you know, rare that they do anybody does it. You know? Oh yeah. But, big but news. It, yeah, there's guns in Denmark. Don't don't fool yourself. They're not so much illegal. It's that you got to register them with the government here. Yeah. To have them. And then their restrictions, you got to belong to their government, there be a citizen, and all the same hoopla as America. But for some reason, everybody in America thinks nobody in Denmark has a fucking gun. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. biker gangs here. What are you, nuts? <laughs> people are people everywhere. They're going to do what they're going to do. Yeah, well, yeah. biker gangs can they're kind of known for their you know, mischief. And if a biker gang wants to have something, they'll have it. Exactly. What are you going to do? Go up and go, hey, Mr. Biker. No. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I try to not, I try to avoid you know, black eyes in hospitals. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm uh, anyway. not against self-defense. You know. Uh, no. At, when was the last time you had to, though? I haven't yourself? had to in... in <laughs> I don't remember. Exactly. But it's been a long time I, for me, if, too. If I did have to. See, that's not the point. That's then the point I'm trying to make is that it's more okay of, for me to do that. But you vibrate on a different frequency, so it doesn't attract that shit anymore. You'll never see it again. Exactly. Right. So it, that's it, the point. You might see it. Other it, people do it. It's better to be a warrior who grows a garden than a gardener who needs to be a warrior. <laughs> I've heard that so many times. And you know what? I, I don't know. I would probably lose my fucking cool and get violent. But in, sitting here talking to you guys, I'm a pacifist. Because nobody's attacked me. So I don't care. <laughs> but should it actually ever fucking happen? I don't, I don't know what I'd do. I can't really foresee it because it's so foreign to me now. Yeah, just the idea. Nah, <laughs> I don't do anything that bad to anyone. So, and I don't vibrate where I, I bring on those kind of people into my life. Bunch yeah. of bad guys I, looking for well, Yeah, and I don't do the same kind of things I did as a young man. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't uh, <laughs> circulate in those kind of circles. Yeah, see, now you've taken the time to understand money. And maybe the, you guys want to talk about that. You guys know, I've talked my butt off about it, but let's hear your side of it. What do you think of money? Uh, money? Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, I don't care. Go ahead, Rob. No, go ahead, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> money is the root of all evil. Greed. Is is like we're all greedy. We all want more stuff. I got more stuff than John, my neighbor has. Boy, howdy, am I neat! <laughs> oh shit! 
<laughs> I'm a nicer person than my neighbor. Boy, am I not better than him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gave more to the March of Dimes. Who kept more than anybody else? Well, yeah, hey. I'm trying well, to, I I read, try to virtue signal here. I read a, a story just either yesterday or the day before about the funding that they raised $35 million in funds to bail these uh, hooligans out of jail. The uh, people mm-hmm. that were rioting, right? Mm-hmm. They spent $200,000 of that. And then when you look into the fine print, you find out that is just about 12000 more than they were legally responsible to spend on it. So where did the other $34.8 million go to? I couldn't even say that without laughing. Management. Management, yeah. Administration. That's Distribution. 35. Yeah. Well... <laughs> And I found a way that they're even thinking about expunging the record of the of the protesters that they had to arrest because they were getting violent. Yeah, but I thought people were all out of work and all this. Wait a minute. Where'd the thirty-four million go to? They don't want to work. Mm-mm. Uh, so this is just people stuffing their pockets with shit that don't exist to pretend that we're in a civil war. You get $25 an hour to protest. Why go back to work? Yeah. Well, how many people were aware of that when it started? Uh, Only the people that saw the flyers advertising it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, even I saw those <clears throat> on the internet, not in person. Yeah, yeah, I saw them on the internet. Because the big thing around here is the kids graduated from high school. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, everybody graduates. Nobody left behind. Let's all be stupid. Yeah. No, their their school thing is a lot different, Larry. <clears throat> even though it's the same bullshit info. They don't make debt slaves out of them to get an education. They pay them to get an education and stay here and become some functioning cog in one of the wheels of, you know, society and keep their damn Danish thing alive. And I'm all for that. I think it's an important part of the whole living experience is to go to somebody else's, you know, country and be you, but not try to make them you. Just try to ex, you know enjoy them the way they are, not change nothing. Even me, and it's a balancing act, but it works. Yeah. Well, that's I wish other people would try it. That's why I don't like mainstream religion. Be like me or die is a concept that I cannot live with. Go ahead and kill me now. Yeah. But Jesus loved you very much, Larry. Uh-huh. Funny well, you bring that up, because I was listening to Clint Richardson. He put out a another series recently. I mean, the, I got the second one. And he is real big on using the word God as a definition for other things that he's got a very unique opinion about all that. And I brought it up before we went live, and I don't think Larry's familiar with Clint. But if you are, Rob, what's your version? No, of? I'm not really. Uh, You're the I one know, that was. I know Larry the name, did. But no, I, I don't know him either. Uh, I mean, well, I'll introduce you to him on an inter- uh, internet link. I'll put something into the notes. Okay. Well, I, I just know, I'm pretty sure he was involved with Rob Menard back when the day when he was he, he was doing his uh, bursting bubbles videos. He get, that's how he got into the whole straw man concept. Mm-hmm. And all that stuff. Mm-hmm. He was involved with that. The, well, uh, I think I the, don't like much, but I like him. Yeah. Well, have you seen Rob Menard's videos? I don't know. The bursting. I'm bubbles not really good with names. Too. Bursting bubbles of government deception. 
Probably. The comedian guy but, uh, talks about the straw man and... and I don't, I'm not really bad with names, Robbie. Okay, give me that Menard. What was uh, it? I'll do better. I'll give you the link. Hey, da 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 Because I was looking up something for uh, Clint Richardson. <clears throat> but he's got some very interesting... Uh, uh, ways to explain how he sees this shit. That, that's what I was getting at. It. You don't have to, you know, I don't agree with every fucking word he says or anything like that, but right, right. I, like, I like his presentation and I like his way he believes what he's saying yeah. is more important to me than that I believe it. You know, right. he'll tell well, you this, the video times. I just posted in the chat, and actually Donna knows him and is friends with him on Facebook. No, nah, um, but he'll tell you all the time. Go look it up. You know, just yeah. check it out for yourself. Uh, Don't trust me and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I like people right, like that. You're, you're like Larry. Yeah. yeah, I'll just open it up. I'll save it for later. Yeah, you'll you'll like this guy. He's funny and uh, he's it, this this is where Clint got started with the whole straw man deal. Okay, that's yeah, where I he got it right here. That's where he all got right. it from. But yeah, again, yeah, Rob's hilarious, and, and uh, he really uh, breaks in down the concept of the straw man thing and how um, <coughs> you were not your straw man and, and this and that and the other. But uh, it's it's a it's a fun watch. I think the straw man is probably one of the hardest concepts to really understand. Yeah. Because it sounds like it's simple when you say it out loud or something, but if it was the very first time that somebody was becoming aware of what the state really is about and what it, how it works, that must be like a, being punched in the face. I don't know what to compare it to, but I mean, I know that's if that was, if it was today instead of when it was that I found out all this neat stuff that I've been informed about. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I think I'd be crushed. You know, a whole lifetime of being conned by everybody that told you they weren't lying to you. <laughs> like, wait yeah. a minute. Because there's been plenty of people out here warning them about it. You know, Carlin. And people thought, well, he was so funny. And I never thought he was joking. I thought he was serious. Because I saw him go through the transition from goofy comedy to, hey, stupid. You know what this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I would say that when his wife died, it brought that side of him to the surface. You know, and I, he wasn't being funny. He was getting back at people. Yeah, just think if, if a comedian was to get up there and do something like that today, he'd be stoned. Absolutely. Yeah, Chappelle is just like, George White compared to the time, right? Yep. And, uh, yeah. And, yeah, and he's taking shit for saying absolutely nothing. These weak fucking people in the public, you know, making up the societies in the big city are, boy, there's some wackadoodles out there, man. Politically correct just does not work for me. I, well, I don't believe in it. Politically correct is suppression of thought, suppression of free speech. Yeah, and what about that? I'm against it. That's what I got. Why? Why are you against me thinking? I, uh, I would rather somebody tell me that my feet stink than yeah. to tell me that oh. they don't just trying to be nice. Nice. See, your story is so familiar because I've heard it. That's what I grew up with, the same kind of core that you did. I think Rob did, too. Probably Grimner. You know, it's up to you. Stock Puppet. Yeah. And then there's this kid that hangs around. It's about, I don't know, I figure about 20-odd 20, 20 years younger than the bulk of everybody else. And he's always whining about us like, what, why are you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you still here? Didn't you guys fuck the world up enough? Can't you die? <laughs> Just die already. And, and 
and it's really sad. This is the worst part. I feel really bad about this part. He absolutely detests females. And he's not shy about that. He'll come in the room and say the most horrible shit about a whole gender. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm, my wife doesn't know an enemy, telling you, but there's some people she does not like. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So yeah, so for yeah, you know, for somebody to to get that that uh, irritating <laughs> yeah. to make Cirque <laughs> go fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> And talk about your suppression of thought, you know, because some people aren't even aware that they're suppressing their own thoughts. Wow. Repeating government slogans that a person that wants to live a, a free-based life, right, in an anarchist-style fashion. And you got some other idiot that's telling him he needs to be in jail because he smokes a flower. <laughs> that, to me, is ridiculous. Even in their own Bible, it says use all the herbs and plants wisely. Is that yeah. not true, though, Rob? Does he not bash all there, of this? There being are wasted, wasted. Of all wisdom. So he, oh, we get all the good names. Called That's going to tell you. Wow. Because, now, all this is based on, we say, on an Internet site that we enjoy the marijuana plant. In some fashion or another. <laughs> so, just like everything else on the internet, we could be bullshit. Can I make everybody mad again? Sure. I don't know. Why are you trying to? Oh, yeah. What? In, What's in, wrong? In the beginning, God created man. Hmm. And in return, man created God so that he would have somebody to blame his shortcomings on. <laughs> Except responsibility for your own fucking decisions. Da, 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 da. Ta -da. And yeah. I, have it. I try to. Do you try to, Rob? No, fuck no. You blame everything that goes <laughs> good or bad. I never do anything yet. wrong. Yeah, I never do anything wrong, so I have nothing to regret. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> wow, I got... I'm Larry and that's Daryl and Daryl over there. <laughs> you guys are I'm perfect. perfect. If you want to know, just ask me. Okay. Well, you, you know, that's probably the best way to do it. Too. Don't be indecisive and tell them what you assume the sale. That's what I did. And I'm telling you, it was nice to wear fancy clothes and have money <laughs> and drive around in a, you know, in a. A vehicle that people all wanted to have. That was fun. I enjoyed the fuck out of that. But I did have the luxury of growing out of it. You know? It was like a little phase I, I went through and went, no, I don't want to do this forever. That was fun now, for a while, but now it's boring. Yeah, yeah. Let's try something else. But I had a flashy van, good clothes. <laughs> I had a lot of money for being an 18-year-old. So... Yeah. Life was good, yeah, and it, all my life, no matter what I go through or where I'm at, and I've been through some shit, hurricanes, you know, earthquakes, devastation, and yet, no matter if it's good or bad, it's always, eh, that was nothing. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, that could have done that. Thing. That was interesting. Uh, Let's do something else. And at the time, and, and at the time, it really was how I was about it. It was devastating, but I've been through it before. Yeah. yeah. So I took it way better. And like people were, cl uh, there was one girl holding the doorway. She was so afraid the earth, you know, earthquake was happening. Room shaking, and she's clutching the doorway. And I'm walking outside to go watch the cars pass on the street, <laughs> yelling at me, "Come back in!" Getting all dramatic, like it's some kind of a TV show, you know. And I'm walking around the building like it's at any normal time through an earthquake because it's been through a lot of. <laughs> and I've read people on the internet. Oh, that's the most scary thing in the world. Uh, only if you get hurt. See, if you don't get hurt, which is really more likely than to get hurt. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Then it's just a the fun weird. Ride. It's yeah. a fun ride. <laughs> it depends. Yeah, it depends and on where you're at. Feel the world shake. <laughs> oh, did you see the the videotape they had of uh, that car going over the the piece of the of the Bay Bridge collapsed as they were driving into it, and their car just went right over the edge. Yeah, they showed stuff like this to people on the you know, uh, on the news. It was horrible. Yeah, horrible, horrible, horrible. But, you know what we did? We got along really good through all the chaos and, and the destruction. And when everything was back to normal, we all had electricity and shit. Yeah. It all fell apart. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that's the fuck Yeah. That's the way I see it. Yeah. People are weird, man. Are they really, or <clears throat> is it just their vibration? Uh, whatever way you want to look at it. Well, it can't be. Can it be? Well, yeah, I guess it could be both ways, huh? Oh. That well, th- you use the vibration as an explanation, but you can see it and not see it at the same time. Hmm. Yeah. Because it's a matter of your perception, where you think, wherever you decide you are in this vibration conversation mm-hmm. right Larry this is with the advice I took from you yeah yeah so I might interpret in it in the appropriate way yeah we we all vibrate at one frequency or another and, and those frequencies that are in harmony with others those are the folks we get along with those but you control them right you can actually oh yeah you can control your frequency absolutely yeah your frequency you is written in stone it's it changes. Yeah. It changes as you go through life. As you, uh, as if you hate you, something passionately, you'll get upset stomach. If you're super sad, you'll get an upset stomach. If you're happy, you won't have an upset stomach. It's that the easy. You feel the frequency in your body with your attitude. Da, 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 da. And I believe that from trying it out. And it works. Yeah. And things, and this is what I learned from you guys, you know, the RLM and all the people on the internet over the years, is whatever the fuck I believe, no matter how ridiculous it sounds to you, screw you guys. It's me. I believe it. See? So, when I make ridiculous comments that people don't like about, say, religion, politics, or education, I shouldn't have to always preface each freaking insult with, but this is my opinion. I mean, who else's opinion would I give you? <laughs> <laughs> Not well, what you have been taught on the commercials. This is the opinion I've been giving you to tell you. <laughs> I think that's the truth in most areas of communication that we deal in. We're, we're not free to speak the way we really want to about the things that we really want to. We're pigeonholed into these dramatic, fucking stressful, crappy things. <laughs> if you don't share the opinion of the general public, you will be ostracized by the general public. Yeah. What, san- what yeah. sanity is is only a matter of what most people think sanity is. Yep. And, and today, you brought this to mind. I wasn't even going to mention it. I passed by the kiosk where they, the train where the guys all drink. And today, there was like eight of them out there. And I had a big old smile. And, and we all wave at each other every time I pass one way or the other. And today, I stopped and uh, I told them, I was so glad to see them out and drinking on that, you know, at the kiosk because I call you guys the, the city council. And when you're not here, I know something's wrong or you ran out of money and wait for the check. And they all, they all know, yeah. So, But when they're there, I feel like that's normal to me. And I told them so. I'm more comfortable with you here than when I pass by and you're not here. So you figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> well, they're a, they're a group of uh, alcohol-loving outcasts, I would say, in the social world. You know, the 
they're not no there's no core here to put your finger on so you put your finger on the guys that like to drink out of the park <laughs> <laughs> you know there are are Danish I guess in this world I'm in that's their uh, homeless but they all have homes <laughs> okay Well, I mean, it's the equivalent of, what, what would you call it, 10 guys hanging out outside of it? Here, I'll give you an example. When I was a teenager, me and my buddy were smoking this joint behind a building. And we thought we were being all sneaky and shit. And this old lady walks up to us and hands me a pack of cigarettes. And she says, oh, you poor young fellows, you shouldn't have to be sharing the same cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That, that that was the idea. So, uh, got, got one in. Well, I don't know. We changed the format, and I like to yak, so I, I don't know. I didn't want to over over uh, step you guys, but I got a lot yeah, of questions. I, I prefer to have us all on together. Yeah, me too. Well, how about talking about bringing it to into fiction? Is that a term that you're comfortable with? It's something I borrowed from um, Clint. Richardson. Bring it into fiction. fiction. Well, when we participate in society, levels of commerce, we we bring it to you know we bring it into fiction. That's where where it all begins to go wrong. <laughs> when you participate, sadly, this is all. If this was just all words on paper and nobody did anything, this wouldn't be a problem. But they did. <laughs> we got a central. Bank people killing us. Yeah. Right fucking now, they're shutting down food supply lines because they don't want to spend their, their trillions of dollars on us. They want to hoard it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's deeper than that, but yeah, effective. Well, they, they just gave away however many fucking trillion dollars in the last six months yeah. to the bankers, and they give the public 1200 bucks a head. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, come on, people. Do a little math and figure it out. That is not, that's not even fair. So they I, give. I want to know who figured out what was essential and what wasn't essential as far as the jobs went. It's essential to make a living so that I can support my family. That sounds yeah. like Rome's would probably be in charge of that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does your personality fit your job? No, you're fired. What? <laughs> but but your honor. <laughs> yeah. She yeah. looked all of fifteen. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Harry goes to court. It was not pretty. <laughs> anyway, but bring it into fiction. How, how do he meet? I, how I interpret his thing is, all these things that we do on paper are all fictions. So, when we participate in it, that's when you make it a reality. Until you do that, it's not real. So, by making it real, then you fuel the other side to it, pound the shit out of you with your own consent and your own money. <laughs> and, and make you a victim of yourself, basically, because... You didn't know you didn't have to. Yeah, the the first time I got a car loan, I read the contract, every word of it. And I went through it with a pencil and scratched out what I didn't want to do and put in what I wanted to do and handed it back to them. And they said, no, you've got to go with the original contractor. We're not going to loan you the money. So you're screwed. Once you sign that piece of paper, you're theirs. Yeah. Yeah, I've argued that with other. Well, not really argued, but I've made the statement that I believe that your signature is your most valuable asset if you understand what it is. Yeah. Most people are not really schooled properly on the value of your signature, how it's recognized in the court system, and all that horseshit. So that may be another story, but <laughs> no. being able just being That's able to write a uh, point. Well, just being able to write in cursive now, Rob, is a, it's becoming a thing of that the past. They're not teaching the youngs. The youngins ain't learning how to curse it. 
They only learn it had a curse. So doesn't that mean that they won't be able to sign a contract because signing is in cursive? I, I've asked that question. And it's no, not get signature is not a requirement for it to be in cursive. It can be an X. Oh, as long there's right. a witness. As long as there's got two witnesses, yeah. Yeah. Well, how, yeah. then you got to find witnesses that can read and write, right? <laughs> really? Yeah. So, I mean, who, it just strikes me as odd. My parents were very attentive and taught me to read and write very young. So, to me, it's normal to start teaching your two-year-old, you know, colors and shapes and sizes and letters and all that. Yeah. And other people were like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, probably 18 months. I was way ahead. But the kid, when the kid could talk, it was like easy. It wasn't a problem. A lot to, it wasn't a struggle to teach her anything. You know? Yeah. But I started really, really young with her. So I had all that time to do that. I was lucky for about four years. A lucky kid. Yeah, well, my the best five minutes of my life. <laughs> That's what I used to call it. Well, that and Bumpy, but... <laughs> so, yeah, I give my kid this horrible nickname because uh, I was aware very young that... You notice girls don't like their own name after they get to be a certain age. Oh, yeah. So I, I figured, I'm going to give my kid this name that I just think is the greatest name in the world. And she's going to grow up and she's going to want to be called something else. So I called her Bumpy. And I made every uh, buddy else call her Bumpy. So when she heard her real name, I was like, oh, fucking hell, they're not calling me Bumpy. <laughs> At least they're not calling me Bumpy. <laughs> right. And, and then we were you know, still seeing each other regularly when she was a teenager. And she's about 17. And uh, she was comfortable with Erica. She's all right, cause I asked her, what do you think of the name I gave? Because, you know, your mom went, gave you your middle name, but I gave you your first name. And she says, oh, I love my name, Dad. Went cool at work. Yeah. Yeah. Opposite approach to what other, other people will do. Yeah. Well, it usually works for me. <laughs> Repetition, man, it's, it works. And there's ways to do it right. There's ways to do it wrong. Yeah. That's what blisters and calluses are about. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get a blister on your brain, Larry? <laughs> no, but you can get a headache from thinking. <laughs> well, I think there's there's a guy that he gets an acre or two, but it's nowhere near his head. <laughs> oh, I'm a meanie. I just don't know why. It's in my nature, I suppose. From all the years of being abused to being a long-haired hippie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know. I I I can't say that. I'm just joking around with that. But uh, as far as that abuse crap, that that shit ended when I was like 12. I said no, 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 we're not gonna do this shit anymore. And it, and it happened a time or two, you know, until I was about 16 or so. But it wasn't severe crap, crazy psycho shit. Yeah. Just, you know, glove tap here and there. But I was tough enough for that by that point. Yeah. But this cycle was, wow, he was with Happy for a few years. Brett kind of raised me, like, too quickly, you know? Yeah. So, well, I was running away from home, going from L.A. to, um, made it to Canada, and all the way back to San Francisco before I got stopped by the police. Hmm. Yeah, I had an exciting childhood. Most kids were like, uh, I don't know. They went to school, and maybe once in a while they went to a movie or something. And me, I went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> For running away from home. This is the beauty of it. So, my punishment... Well, you got caught. Was, I never got caught. <laughs> it, yeah, well, I was 12, man. Oh, and I was like five foot fucking tall. It was hard It was hard to believe I, I got away with what I got away with. Because I'm so little. Yeah. But usually when the grown-ups would, you know, corner me, I'd talk my way out of it. But if it was the cops, the cops were trying to, uh, yeah. couldn't, couldn't bullshit the cops. I don't buy your bullshit. <laughs> or, no. or if you couldn't think quick, it'd give me an address. And you didn't think. Oh, 712 Brown Street. And usually there is one. Yeah. You know, I, I had like a, 
what was it, the most popular street names in America. And I looked at that yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> but sometimes it yeah. doesn't work. There's always a Martin yeah. Luther King. Meaning? There's oh, always. no, no, not in those days, wasn't it? No. No, well, that was, oh, crying out loud. Well, maybe no, it was, it was Brush Street Boulevard in those days. 70, yeah, 71, 72. Yeah. That came later, I think. Could be wrong, but I don't have a or any tree name. Have a, Elm, Palm, Oak. Right, right. See, something like that. Brown Street. Brown is the most common last name in America. Really? Or it was in the day when I was growing. Now it's probably Ahmed or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. You white people are falling down in the bedroom. Get out there and do a little reproduction and stuff. Quit fucking around. Oh, but they won't. Because, you know why? Technology has fucked us in every hole we got so we can't reproduce anymore. We're eating so many soy products, all we've got is estrogen and no testosterone anymore. See, they, they lie to the public and get away with it. And some countries did, and they got caught, and people went, hey, wait a minute, stop that, knock that off. But, see, in America, this is the part where I so totally disagree. Protesting, to me, seems to me, that I would be going to the government and saying, uh, Mr. Government, uh, you're doing all this wrong. Will you please take that out of the box? It really hurts. And they're going to look back at me and say, go away. <laughs> and that's my experience with and my opinion of government at any fucking level I don't care how big or small it is yeah. when you get other people forcing their will on you because it's popular well then you got a fucking problem with somebody you know? or even depriving other people of things like <clears throat> cannabis for example <laughs> you like Popeye I am what I am and that's all what I am <laughs> well what, what are you Larry how do you define yourself now Weird. Oh, oh, I like that. Yes. Very good. Artistic. Weird. Are me. you left you left handed? Absolutely. Rob is too, right? No. No. Oh, I figured you would. The I would have people been in the left. world are left handed. If you want to know, just ask one yeah. of us. Yeah, my father <laughs> slapped me into being right handed. My they bragged about it when I was growing up. All right, you have your fucking mind. But there you go. And I'm not ambidextrous completely, but there's something. Like when I sit here and uh, use my mouse playing video games, I can do it left or right-handed. Yeah, same. With, but yeah. I I don't, I, but I can't write left-handed. My left-hand writing looks like chicken scratch, for real. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I can do it, but it's, yeah, it looks like crap. Mm. We ought to start a school. For people to learn cursive for just 1995 down 1995 until you fucking learn it <laughs> take your time I ain't going anywhere <laughs> let's start with right. the letter A <laughs> all right. but, but, you know people complain about being out of work and all this horse shit in life and I didn't I think this the strength I had for uh, working was to create work yeah. I didn't depend on, like, companies and shit like that. I learned early, yeah, they shut down, and, boy, you you need that money. It ain't there no more. You go, wait a minute. <laughs> what happened? That's I was just making a, a bunch of money, and now uh, you guys are telling me I'm done? 19 years old, that's no way to treat a teenager eating <laughs> bricks. <laughs> <laughs> but, see, I had the luxury, though, of the truth at 19 and 20 instead of, uh, Whatever everybody else was listening to that sucked them into the shit they got into. Yeah. Move, please. Mortgages and car loans and boy. Are you yeah. adding don't you know what Jewish people do with money? It's wrong. That's why they're the ones that do it. <laughs> everybody else gets to be clean and they just borrow it from <laughs> Yeah. 
what kind of scam is this? I mean, are, are we this ignorant we're going to believe these horseshit stories? All this wealth all around us, but hey, you got to work. Just yeah, to you ain't got enough to buy a fucking cheese sandwich. <laughs> this, this guy's worth 400000 a year. What does he do? Well, he shoots about a 68. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh? Ah. <laughs> what? You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Golf pro. Uh, well, look at how much attention that people that do real work and struggle get. <laughs> they get ridiculed for not having an education so they don't have to do that work instead of, boy, I'm glad there's somebody to do that fucking work. Um, and I'm one of those. People that are too dependent on others to do something for them that they got to hire an electrician to turn a breaker back on. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. The, the guy across the street from <laughs> us used to be an accountant. And he, he had, his panel was right there where you could see it. And a big red square would, would light up when the breaker was turned off. Yeah. And he I did know. not know enough to turn that back on. <laughs> With, or maybe he was afraid to. You always got to let the fear back. Yeah. Right well, that's that's what it is. It's fear. Yeah. Some people are terrified of touching anything electrical when they're afraid of it. They don't really do it. Ah. Not gonna do it. Right. But you, <laughs> Mr. Electrical. <laughs> You just <laughs> say, yeah, okay, I'll do this. Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, it's either going to work or it's going to blow I, up in my face. I still saw this link that they're taking these, uh, taking those concrete barriers away from some street in Portland. And so the people that that started all this crap and agreed to let these kids do all this shit have now rescinded on their original deal. Isn't that the way it is? Really? Or am I looking at it fucked up? What, yeah, what am I missing? They finally saw reason. Well, okay, who is they that finally saw reason? The people that are governing that part of town. But aren't they the same people that allowed it in the beginning? They're the same people that caused it in the beginning. Right. Then yeah. now, what are we witnessing here, Larry? Rob, help, help. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Political two-faced circuses. Down. Yeah. Bread and circuses. It's a distraction. Yeah. Absolutely. Look it's a this. distraction. Look at here. What, and what are they doing to trying to figure out what, what they want to see? <laughs> sorry, I spoke over you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I'm sorry. Hey, Julie B. <laughs> okay. Take two. <laughs> Go ahead, The Bob. political circus. Take two. Yeah, it's uh, it's just uh, distractions. Right. So pay attention to this while we while we collapse the economy and uh, fuck everything up. Okay. Now here's something I don't really understand, but I do understand it, but I don't at the same time. It's very weird. They're borrowing trillions and freaking dollars to run everything through the stock exchange, right? Mm -hmm. They use most of that money that they printed, supposedly. They probably didn't even print it. It's just, you no, know, it's not printed. Uh, on some computer screen, it's some big shot. Yeah. 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 Right? So well, the money doesn't exist, period, at any level of normal, of agreed upon reality. Yet here we are playing all these financial games today with each other, doing commerce like everything's fucking normal, or the people that don't aren't. I, I don't even know what to make. How do you even explain shit? It, it, it's, it's it's weird. Yep. Because where where are all these people that are going without right now? Because there's got to be a ton of them. Their cities were burned out. There's no information on any of that. Well, this was two weeks ago that these riots took place and burnings and all this other shortages. Mm -hmm. well, where's where's the follow up report about the people that are paying for that now? No, they don't. They don't think that's important for you to know about. 
Do you see any of it? I, I'd like to know. So what I'm saying is, there's what's the source of information to find out what's going on in the world in America right now? Because, the, like, the shit they're putting on YouTube is all basically uh, clips of news. You know, the, the MSM. Yeah. And even, and even the, the, a lot of the smaller stuff just seems to be leaning towards picking a side in the argument and not addressing the problem. You know? Because how many people, I said 500 or something. Anyway, Rob corrected me. But the police have been killing a shitload of people. Every year, unarmed American, most of them are just uh, petty criminals. It's not even worth, it's not, doesn't value death, the crime. So they're, they justify it by the person who ran. Well, what the fuck do you think you're going to do when some group of hooligans is chasing you? You think you're going to stand there and wait? No. <laughs> Unless you're an idiot. Then yes. You will. We're looked on, the people that will run are looked on as something's wrong with us. Well, how, how do you know the, people, the police are police? Some guy's wearing a suit. How the fuck do you know? Yeah. That's my question. And then you got all this undercover shit. And these fucking undercover guys got badges. What the fuck is that nonsense? They shouldn't be allowed to do that. That You talk about invasion of fucking privacy. And not only that, but there's no way to prove he's telling me the truth. So it could be a con man. Pretending yeah, to be a con man. Letter and trap, man. But, or just a fucking smart-ass guy with his buddy being a fucking funny guy. How do you know? Yeah. You don't. But boy, when they're there, they, they expect you to kneel and bob. So the, yeah, the uniformed ones. Oh, those... I've yet to meet anybody that can honestly give me an example of their last wonderful time they had with a suited policeman in the United States. They, people cringe. That they see their butt, pu their butt puckers when the, they see the lights or when they see the cop. I mean, even like Mary, when, when that child, her, uh, well, child, the young man that her kids grew up with was shot by the police it was so out of character and surprising to everybody but it numbed Mary to that I remember it all you know? mm -hmm. so you know just kind of all these little things that happen to us in life prepare us for the next big devastating shock you know I'm sick of that kind of uh, presentation of life but that's what America does and I don't want to give it up it is my home and all that where I'm originally from. But, wow, there's not a lot of positive coming from there anymore. Yeah. Um, it's good not, little not so. just here either. I mean, it's all over the world. As a matter of okay. fact, it's, it's, it's worse in some places. Well, like, I don't go anywhere anymore, so I don't know where. And I yeah. live in this little paradise, so I'm spoiled. I'm a spoiled little hobbit. It's embarrassing. Well, I almost feel like there's rioting bad. all over the world right now. I mean, France has been demonstrating and rioting and on and off for years, forever. It's, for, it's been going on for long. It's just not even a it's not even a blip on the radar anymore. It's just oh, well, that's just normal for France, <laughs> I guess now. And uh, Italy's been going on and off like that too. Okay, you know, there's other places, your, I mean, you know, of course, the Middle East has been on fire tired. for decades. Pretty much everywhere. You know, so. Is that good Israeli it, training? It might be easier to find a place that isn't burning down. Hey, give me two minutes. My cat wants to eat. I'm going to take him upstairs. I'll be right back. Yeah, Rob? All right. I'm really happy that I live in where I live because... None of that stuff's going on here. We don't. We're not having riots. We're not at disrest. We're not yeah, pissed um, off the world. And ninety percent of the country is the same. Yeah, it's just it, it's just a few isolated little spots in these hellhole cities that are that are 
all up in flames and up in arms. And, you know, they're blasting it all over the airways like it's, you know, the only thing going on. It's way out of proportion. It's not. The, the, around here, I go fishing when I want. I go to the restaurants. Now you can eat inside a restaurant again. Yeah. I go shopping when I want to go shopping. I, I do not wear a mask. I will not wear a mask. It, a, a few months ago, if you were to walk into a bank with a mask on, they'd shoot you. Yeah. And now well, you've got stop to. stop you at the door and say you can't come in here. <laughs> oh. Wait, yeah, you really have to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, things are so weird. <laughs> yeah, upside down. Sorry. That's funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and there's places, that, but there's places where the masks are prevalent, like uh, Lone Frog is saying, the masks are everywhere, and people are saying the animosity is growing towards those who don't wear them. Mm-hmm. But in the places uh, where, you know, they've got guys, You don't think? What? Doesn't that dehumanize looking at somebody else and their face is half cut? I, I don't yeah. want to see that. Yeah, it's unnatural. <sighs> That's, and not yeah. only that, it's, it's actually, in my opinion, mm. not good for you. To sit there mm. and rebreathe the same crap of all that, you know. It, uh, it is bad for you. And it's bad for you to be cooped up in the house with your family. You're spreading that disease to your family. Yeah. And you're creating okay. an unhealthy atmosphere. Okay, so how, uh, but identify what unhealthiness you're speaking of mental or physical? Both. Okay, well, I missed, it, I was away doing well, there's, the There's been the studies study. done that, that wearing a mask for extended periods of time is unhealthy. Because all of the uh, stuff you're expelling is being caught in the mask. And everything yeah. around you is collecting in that mask. It's a collector. It sits there and collects all this shit. And then you're just, you're, you're basically guaranteeing that anything that you come in contact with is eventually going to get sucked into your lungs. Because that mask is going to sit there and collect it. And eventually, it's going to work its way into your lungs. And illnesses can also enter your body through your eyes and your ears. And your skin. And your skin, yes. In Even. order to be protected from this, you'd have to be in a bubble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And got, I agree with you guys. I'm not I mean, it's, there's no, it's, it's not even a feasible concept. You're, you're better off uh, just washing your hands. Not, yeah. not it, coming it into contact so with things that, I mean, when you go out and about and you're at the grocery store, don't lean all up on the counter while you're waiting for the guy to, or girl to <laughs> check out <laughs> all your groceries. Don't lean all over, you know, don't lick the plastic and shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I asked my, my favorite, you know, I asked my favorite store clerk today, I said, uh, I leaned around the, the screen and I asked him, have I ever in all these years ever sneezed at you? And no. I went, oh, it just felt like asking. <laughs> and then I'm we laughed. That, because he knows this the whole thing is so ridiculous. It's just, you can't say it because you got bosses and, you know, customers that don't agree with you. So you got to, but if we do it in English, he gets away with it. Hey, he's talked about the thing, I guess. He says, yeah, repeating, I've seen him, you know? repeat, repeatedly breathing your own flora is not good. Yes. Ooh. But, but Captain, this is all we have, and there ain't no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm referring to the brain cell shortage amongst people that are yeah. so gullible that they'll bypass common sense and physical goddamn comfort to obey a fucking law or to be afraid of an invisible ghost. So, nah, nah I can't do that. I, I live too long. They to an invisible animal. ghost. Why not be afraid of one? Hmm. Right. Hmm. Yeah, but is that Casper or Jesus that you're referring to? 
No, that's huh. that's Marvin the Martian. Hey, but I mean, but it's all craziness in the end, isn't it? When you think it through. Yeah. We're we're all electrical wavelengths bouncing off things, experiencing this, that, the other, and, and then you got to sit down and have other people explain what's going on to you. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I thought I was existing here. Why are you telling me what's going on? I I start out with everybody by presenting them a peaceful, calm, loving atmosphere, an attitude. And yes, what, do. what they send back to me is exactly how I'm going to treat them. If, if you send back to me that agitation and being pissed off at me, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it right back around and send it back to you. No, I don't want Larry to be mad at me. I'll be mad at Rob. <laughs> I don't. Larry, it takes a lot to make me mad. Oh, oh, never mind, Rob. If it takes a lot, yeah, if it's just like a little thing, no, I don't. Know. Well, that's the thing. Oh, that. Hey, we haven't had a good fight on this show yet. <laughs> no. You gotta show me you're a real asshole before I'm gonna be an asshole back. Yeah, I believe you though. But what? So what would irritate you enough to uh, get angry in the first place? Somebody hurting a, someone that I loved? It couldn't be a disagreeing opinion about something, right? No. <laughs> no. no. What, I right know for now, maybe. what I know for an absolute fact today, mm -hmm. absolute fact, is going to be different tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> is that because the perception changes, or is that because the vibration changes? A little bit of both. My mind can be changed. Prove me wrong. Explain to me what is right, and if I agree, then I'll change my mind. That's what the whole thing's about right there, is deciding for yourself what it is. Yep, and living with your decisions. And we're influenced by the strangest Shit. Telling you. Boom. I got a cat, right? All that hoopla I had to go away for a bit. The cat rubs my leg when he wants to go upstairs to eat. I guess he wasn't allowed up there alone at some point in his life before I came into it. But we moved him upstairs for his food to keep him and the dog separate. And it's the weirdest thing, like that there's no there's just this thing rubbing against my leg and my brain goes up. Oh, Sorry, guys, got to go feed the cat. <laughs> I'm so well trained. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty trained. I'm performing for an animal. <laughs> yep. But it's kind of it's kind of cool though, in a sick way, I guess, because it to be, be the one in control of whether another being eats or not is a, it's a very important place to be. Shows how compassionate you are. Right, but that animal is got respect for you. It, it shows you it owns you and everything. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's marking him, me as his territory well, to get my attention, so I'll feed him. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I don't know if it's smart enough, but cats are kind of pompous. I don't think they care about us much. <laughs> Unless they get what they want, they get what they want, then they get these little rituals to do that make you look like you're important, but it's really got not, not much to do with me. It just mm -hmm. looks like that, right? Mm -hmm. That's politics, religion, and education, right there in a nutshell. It looks like something, and it feels like something, but you're way off. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, the cat's just showing everybody else it on the huh? <laughs> oh, just rubbing their scent on you. <laughs> yeah. Mark is in yep. Isn't that what perfume is for? <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you spray it all over the cat, the cat will run away. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I was at a bar or two in the 80s, and some female had a little more perfume on than she probably should have. And the girl I was with said, hey, what's all that about? I don't know, but, you know, we were in a crowded bar, elbow to elbow and shit like that. Shit gets on you. And you could smell like either an ashtray or, I don't know, French hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on, you know, where your your head goes. If your boob level, uh, 
narrows it down just a little bit. Because <sighs> all the dirty smoke goes to all you tall guys, and I'm down there with the boobs where all the fun is at. Nipples. You go, wow, being short such a drag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I was tall. <laughs> I've never said that out except for like a joke like now. <laughs> but my brother is tall. My little brother. Certainly got the uh, privilege of seeing the two of us together at the same time, which is like night and day. You know, you go, wow, you two aren't related at all, are you? <laughs> nah. Don't look alike. Don't. See. I look like one parent. He looks like the other. Hmm. Yeah, except for I got the male. I got the male version of my mom, and he looks like my father. Hmm. I mean, outside of that, but if you didn't know my parents and you saw the two of us together, like people did, you never guessed you're brothers. Yeah. N- nah. Even hey, who's your friend from America? No, that's my little brother. He's like six one, <laughs> six foot. <laughs> like that. Little? What? Yeah, well. This is my big little brother. Well, that's what, how I came up with the uh, decision that they cut the umbilical cord way too soon. Because <laughs> uh, I was two months premature in 1959. Ah, yeah. And survived it, where other children my size didn't, weren't quite so, you know, like, they weren't so fortunate. Yeah. But apparently, yeah, my father was, he was funny. Oh, we cut your diapers and then to buy the cloth diapers or whatever. We had to cut those diapers in half because they would fall off of you. You're so little. You know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, compared to other children, I was really little. So guess what? <laughs> As I grew up, didn't get very big. But my brother, my little brother. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like a weed. He got the full of those. <laughs> yeah, but I was faster and smarter and older and more experienced by about yeah. 24 months, something like that. 20 something months, 24. 20, not even that, 14. I'm thinking the wrong country. Uh, we're a year and two months apart. So, but to be that small in the world, most people my size have an attitude. Or they did when I was younger. Now that I'm old, my short peers seem to be like me. Just don't give a fuck about nothing. <laughs> Size, weight, dimension, you know, color, hair. None of that shit matters any fucking way. Yeah. So, well, there comes a point where you got to get past judging other people because of colors and just yeah. stupid things like what kind of clothes they wear, uh, what gender they are, shit like that. It doesn't fucking matter in the first place. But society's done is they've taken the things that 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 don't matter and they've made them not matter by making them matter <laughs> by making them ridiculous. You know things that you would just normally see you let them go, yeah. like bumping like into some in guy wearing a dress. World. Yeah, but now it, like some guys wearing dress. Some people in the world think that they're being brave. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're being a little weird. Yeah, yeah I think it's just it's okay. It's so the way they blown. I mean, it's, they've it's, manipulated it's, all the words to fit the story. Yeah, well, they've taken this, this supreme minority of people and blown their whole <laughs> existence <laughs> out of proportion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're a tiny little sliver of society. I mean, come on. And they Why, got the nerve to call it racism. You know, I don't care what they do. I don't care what you want to do with your life. You know, but that doesn't mean you deserve, you know, 90% of the attention. Well, it's the negative attention, I think, Rob. Well, yeah, they want any attention. Well, they play it just really like, good just like, a, just like a rowdy kid. They're going to act out to get attention, whether it's good or bad. Put out a few good musicians in the 60s. <laughs> good guitar yeah, players yeah. in the 30s and the 40s. Yeah. But, uh, outside of that, maybe a few basketball players. Uh, that what, you know, to accomplish something by race is more, more ignorant than you can imagine. 
Now, if they were trying to pull off, like, tribe, I might, might even be sympathetic towards that, but they don't. They use this imaginary racism shit. Yeah, well, this this imaginary, uh, not imaginary, perceived um, harm that they've suffered <laughs> because their great grandparents were slaves. Um, well, I think it's because they got tricked into becoming Democrats and the shit that they that goes along with it. Well, yeah, yeah, they weren't aware yeah, of it. Whole they just another level of it. But, yeah, yeah. Black people in Africa today own millions of slaves. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And there's a lot of, there were, and have been slaves of every race, color, creed, gender, what the fuck ever you want. There, there were more yeah. Irish slaves than there ever were black slaves in America. Yeah. Who been debt slaves? You got and, layers in and, different yeah, ways. And if you really want to look at it, we're all slaves today. <laughs> yep, we're, we're all, all slaves. slaves. Yeah. Well, I'm not slaves or outcasts. Outcast. You're either a slave or an outcast like me. And the people mm -hmm. that indentured themselves for seven years for passage mm -hmm. to the new world. That yeah, was seven years that, of slavery. That's voluntary servitude. Yeah. Yeah, and back when you had a code and you were dependent on others to uh, eat, because we have this, we had this other world where we had restaurants open at four in the morning. Remember that other world where we came from, that dwindled down in the last twenty or thirty years to this yeah. fat joke they're calling America. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm scared. You guys got me frightened. I don't know what to make of it. I think you're headed for civil war from what I'm reading and seeing, though. No. Nah. No. They're pushing for it. All this They're stuff pushing for it, but it'll never said, happen. All this stuff okay. is very isolated. It's it's all orchestrated and mediated. That's why they're pushing like, for the people the, to do stuff. And the, media, the media is... It, you're, getting, you're getting that micro view. Um, yeah. it. You know, they're showing these zoomed-in photo ops of these places where it's all, you know, it looks like it's just total chaos. And, yeah, Minneapolis got a little crazy there for a little bit. But all the rest of this is just fake bullshit. If the media would stop reporting on it, it'd go away. Yeah, well, it never doesn't exist. There's not a lot it's on the internet. It's it's it's, it's freaking uh, what do they call them? Uh, they're fucking uh, lying photo shoots. shoots. The the sets, <coughs> they're sets, they're movie sets. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. They're like movie Old sets. Actors. They they they're setting up. That's the whole thing in Portland. They're saying, oh, they set it up and then they turn it down. It was a photo op. Yeah. Wow. How nice. It's all it's psyop. It's all orchestrated. And it's controlled. It's all been computer modeled and tested. And this is what the computer is telling them to do. Oh, okay. So they're they're taking orders from a higher source. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it's orchestrated. It's not. It's not a direct order thing. They well, know I how to manipulate the things in a way to make things happen without it actually being their hand on the, on, you know. On it's amazing page. what cash will do. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, hey, you want a left nostril inhaler that glows in the dark and fires a 22 shell? I got four of them left. <laughs> I guess I'm going to. I'm not going to have to end the show early here. Cause not a problem, Rob. Thanks I a lot for an emergency in. pit stop coming up. Okay, well, I was yakky tonight, so... No, no, it was, I, I prefer you to stay with us the whole time. I, I don't okay, well... That makes the whole uh, show. I mean, that's the whole, right. the whole banter and everything is what really is cool, in my yeah. opinion. So... Oops. Uh, yeah, we're coming up on five. We'll just knock it off at five till 40 seconds to go. Okay. So, any okay, well, thanks a lot, flash? Larry. And thanks a lot, Rob, for letting me play. And I'll oh, see yeah. you guys next week. We really enjoy it. Yes, we do.
All right. Thanks, thanks for coming, Larry, and thanks, everybody, for listening. It's been the Dropping a Coil Show on Thursday, June 18th. Have a great week.